Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I'm here with my friend Derek. We're wrapping up a video series on the Hisense L5F 100 inch laser TV. So far, we've done two videos in this video series. The first video was an unboxing as well as an overview of this entire system. And then we also did an installation video of the 100 inch screen. Now I'll have links to both of those videos down in the description below as well as at the end of this video. Now at the time of this video, the Hisense 100 L5F 100 inch TV is $34.89 and they also have a 120 inch version, the 120 L5F laser TV for $49.99. Now I'll have links to both of these down in the description below. So in this final video, we're gonna be talking about several things. Number one, we'll talk about the mounting of the projection screen to the wall. We'll also talk about the initial setup. What steps do you need to take to get the screen and the, and the projector aligned up with the screen, the initial calibration. We'll also talk a little bit about what we use to calibrate the projector. And then we'll also talk about um, how does the projector look, the image quality, especially in regards to with the lights on and with some ambient light in the room, as well as with the lights off, since we are dealing with an ambient light rejection screen. And then we'll wrap up the video with our overall thoughts, things that we like and dislike about this projector to help you to try to figure out if this is a good fit for your setup. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what it takes to mount this to the wall. Now, Derek, we're here in your home. Kind of walk us through the steps that you took to secure the projection screen to the wall. All right, guys, <clears throat> you guys have seen a couple of our videos uh, before and you realize that uh, where we're mounting it is not necessarily uh, <laughs> the most uh, ideal place. Uh, there is a window there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am dealing with a, uh, uh, you know, I'm renting, uh, so I have to be cognizant of the space that I'm in. Um, so there were some uh, things that we had to do there to prep the space, um, but it is a space where we had a screen before um, and this, this uh, projector does come with its own screen and it has a different uh, mounting hardware. Uh, previously it was a, a basically a metal, uh, excuse me, aluminum uh, French cleat. <clears throat> this one has like, uh, like a vertical and, and we'll show you uh, the vertical. Like a mounting uh, bracket? Just like a mounting bracket and just two of them. Um, and like I said, you'll, you'll see that in pictures. Um, but it also came with this very <laughs> this uh, massive. long mounting template, um, but very, very helpful. Um, probably the, the key portions on this, and, and we'll get some pictures on here as well, is it actually tells you um, where on this, according to uh, the height of the, whatever your stand is, it gives you recommendations of the height of the stand, and then the, from the top of the stand to the top of this template, it tells you the distance that it should be there for you to actually, um, and that this is actually the top of the screw hole as well. Um, another key point on that is it tells you how high the actual top of the screen will be once you have it mounted to the brackets, which I believe is, uh, I believe it's 60, 66 and 7 eighths uh, of an inch um, from the top of the table or your mm -hmm. surface that you're going to put it on. Um, another cool part on this <clears throat> is if you can see this whole portion here on both sides, as long as you're within this portion of it, this is where um, like you're, you would find a, the stud um, or you know concrete or whatever but if you would find this stud within this portion this is where you would mount the bracket at so as long as you're within this portion on there you can mount that pretty much anywhere so this was a very very helpful tool in deciding that and the measurements as well and this um, was something we've reviewed several <clears throat> different um ultra short throw projectors on my channel and this is the first time i've seen something like that so i think that definitely helps aid in kind of figuring out where, because some of the other ones, we literally had to guess. We pretty much mounted it to the wall, and then we had to figure out how do we mount the projector, what height, and that was one of my biggest complaints initially. And not even, not only that, um, but in the in the manual itself, it also um, puts the, 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 excuse me, the dimensions on how far from the mm -hmm. wall, and literally shows where to the back of the screen and where on the back of the, the screen and the projector how, what that distance is supposed to be and the height it's supposed to be 
from the table that it's on or your, your uh, entertainment stand to the bottom of the screen once you have it there. Um, also, once it's mounted on the brackets, it has this cool system uh, where it has these little uh, key turns. Mm -hmm. So each one of the two brackets can, can be shifted this way. So, so you if you can imagine two, two uh, pieces right here and, and the, the screen is actually sitting on top of the, uh, let's, I will just call it ledge, and you can shift it up or down so you're basically keystoning it. Yeah, so well, you can level, we'll it, level basically it basically with those two adjustment so tools. So very, very thoughtful. Yeah. Um, and with that, this screen is extremely light. Yeah. Um, I think it weighs in at 15 pounds. And the other one that we had was probably 35, yeah. maybe 40 pounds. Yeah. I mean, obviously it was a very, very well constructed screen, but um, you know, when you're dealing with something like this, which I was very, very impressed with how this was constructed mm -hmm. and how it mounts. All right, so now let's go ahead and go into a little bit about um, what it takes to set this unit up. One of the biggest challenges that we run into with mm -hmm. ultra short throw projectors, and honestly, even with the high sense, is being able to align the image exactly with um, the projection screen. Honestly, guys, it's just a pretty tedious process. Um, sometimes you have to raise the projector up. You have to adjust the feet. The good thing in Derek's setup, he actually made a custom kind of entertainment center that allows us to easily raise and lower the height of the projector. Um, with you, if you've just got like an entertainment center, you probably don't have that luxury. You don't have that ability. So it definitely makes it a little bit more challenging. So that's where something like this, yeah. you really need to study this mm -hmm. and make sure that you're mounting your screen in a position that is going to be conducive to the location of the projector itself. Right, and that's why I, I applaud Hisense for putting mm -hmm. this in here. Um, for, for, and the reason why I built that was because no one was, no one was doing yeah. this. That's the whole reason why I built that thing because that is the hardest part. Uh, and even at, at that, it still was the hardest part. Yeah. We had the instructions. We still had difficulties getting that thing lined up and, we, and we're, we're level on, you mm -hmm. know, left to right, front to back. We're level on the screen and it still had, you know, some alignment issues. Sure, so one thing that's really cool that Hisense did inside the menu is there's an option, kind of like an auto calibration. And Derek, kind of walk us through that process because that was totally unique. I've never seen anything quite like that. Right, so the, one of the cool things, uh, I'm sure Mike will do his magic here and you'll see this on the screen, but uh, when you do the auto calibration, it kind of gives you this grid and it wants you to kind of align it the best you can within this grid. And once you've got the outline in there, you hit next. And it says, okay, you know, use your phone and do your QR code and it takes you to this web page. As long as your phone and the, the uh, projector on the same Wi-Fi signal, uh, it asks you to take a photo and it projects a white screen with a bunch of black dots on there. So you take a photo, you say upload, and you wait a few seconds. Next thing you know, you watch the thing just go <laughs> It basically just pops it all into place. And then it says, hey, how's that look? <laughs> and then it gives you a chance to adjust it more if you mm -hmm. want to adjust it more, um, or you can accept it as it is. Um, doesn't stop there though. So you can look at it, accept it. And you know, I did, I was like, okay, it looks pretty good. But then when we played some content, mm -hmm. you know, Mike's like, no, oh, it looks like you're missing some content up at the top left. So you can also go in and just Correct. do general adjustments. And I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's an eight point adjustment that you can do. And I was able to kind of bring everything back mm -hmm. in. So now it's you know, dialed in. So I was very, very cool that they have that tool in there to make this process, you know, as, you know, <laughs> as simple as possible. Just because like I said, they've got, you know, even with all the math, all the uh, calculations and, and the ability to move my table, it still needed help from, from the machine. So the fact that they've added all of that in there to try to make it as sure. pain-free as possible. Because um, I promise you, let's see, the LG85, uh, mm -hmm. yep. you know, you, uh, I'm, I'm going to mess that number up, but yeah. it don't matter. The Vava, Vava all of them. Um, and uh, I know we've had another one in here, but... 
I told Mike, I'm like, this is the longest process. Yeah. You know, like normally I would, I would put them in here and I would spend hours trying to get them as close as I could. This one was the easiest mm -hmm. by far. Um, so I definitely applaud Hisense for that. Now, after we got the image aligned with the projection screen, the next thing we did is we went into some video calibration. Um, now, I use just a real basic tool. Um, there's different discs online. I'll link to some of them down in the description below. If you've got a projector, this is just a great disc, and I think they'll even work with your TVs as well. Um, but this is the Disney Wow disc. It's a little bit older. It's a Blu-ray. It's got step-by-step -step instructions on how to adjust proper brightness, contrast, color, um, even your sharpness. And then there's even some additional advanced tools in there that you can go through and kind of tweak some settings. Overall, we didn't make much adjustments to those basic settings. Um, and so really by default, it had a really good picture. Mm -hmm. This just helped us fine tune it a little bit more. I think these are about 60 bucks on Amazon. Like I said, there's several different versions and different manufacturers that make these. I highly recommend picking up one. Again, I'll leave those down in the description below. All right, so Derek, we've reviewed several of uh, ultra short throw projectors. We've done a Vava, we've reviewed an LG, we've reviewed an Epson, and now we've got the Hisense. Um, image quality, I mean, how does this maybe compare to some of those other ones? Well, I would say um, still as far as image quality, that, that LG um, probably had the best image quality. Um, obviously, we had the Alunavision uh, 8K Aurora uh, screen. Um, and then as far as price to performance, I kind of was settling on that, the Vava there for a while. Um, uh, the Epson was okay, um, and that but was wasn't, a, that was a 1080p it, it was a projector. 1080p projector. Um, so the Vava was kind of where I was going for price for performance. Um, still liked the LG, but it was just to, for me a, a little bit cost prohibitive. Um, but this Epson, uh, not, this Epson, the Hisense, I'm sorry, the Hisense, uh, the whole package, I'm super, super impressed with. Um, the screen with the, you know, with the projector, uh, and the fact I, I use it with my 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 Xbox Series X, which was a big uh, a big thing for me. Um, so the fact that there's four HDMI 4K 60 ports in there, I don't, you know, 60 hertz is plenty fine for me. Uh, I, you know, I know it'll do 120 hertz, but 60 was all I was hoping for on mm -hmm. there. So I'm I'm. I'm extremely happy that I'm able to do that. Um, and like I was telling you, the, the screen itself, um, yes, there's a little bit shininess on, on the, the bezel, mm -hmm. um, but it, it makes the mind think of TV. And I think that's yeah. kind of what they were going for. It, it really puts off that it's, it's a TV. And I, I kind of appreciate that. And uh, it's just a fantastic picture i'm extremely pleased with it and i think i've pretty much settled on on this one i'm, I'm very very happy the actual projector itself is black so it, it fits my mm -hmm. uh, you know my other equipment in here so it looks really nice in here but you know just overall performance and and uh quality of picture um even you know we were talking about sound earlier yeah. even the the sound um even you know, I have a, a sound system. I have a Clips sound system, um, which I love. But um, there were times where I didn't realize that my receiver hadn't kicked on, and I was getting sound. It didn't sound, you know, it didn't sound on the quality. But I was sure. like, I was getting sound, but I was doing other things, and I didn't think about it. And then I sat down and I'm like, oh wait, my my stereo is not on. But it, you know, it's got good sound. Um, and, and if you think about it in the sense that they're selling it as a TV. Most TVs don't have good sound, and you're probably right. going to buy a sound bar. Well, it's got definitely sound bar quality sound. Sure. So, um, yeah, it it's a good option. And I'm telling you, a 100-inch screen is, it's fun. It's pretty impressive. It's fun. I mean, literally, think about this. And I, this is one thing I've seen with this Orchard Short Throw kind of marketing is that they're really marketing for living rooms. Um, most of you guys don't have a dedicated theater room like I do. You've got a space, you know, Derek's room isn't a huge room. 
you know, but we've got a, a screen that fills up three quarters of your wall and we're probably like maybe 10 foot from that. And it's a gorgeous picture. It's huge. You get this really nice immersive sound. And like Derek said, the, the speakers in it, they're not super exciting. There's no subwoofer there. Although they do sell a separate subwoofer, I think with the higher end model, the 120 inch. Um, but you know, it's not gonna rock your world with sound. But to me, you know, of course on my channel, I'm a big advocate of putting together a home theater yeah. system, um, including speakers and a receiver, subwoofer and things like that. But if you're just looking to get a bigger screen with a really good picture, and in just a moment, we're gonna show you just some actual footage of the image quality from some 4K footage that I purchased, some royalty free footage. Um, and so overall, man, I love the colors in this. I love the, the image quality. We've got great saturation, but it's not like overly saturated. Um, we've got really good detail and clarity. Being a 4K image, um, just overall, the picture quality on this is really, really spectacular. Well, and I know one of the things that we had talked about before, um, especially when we were looking at the the Vava, the, we're talking about the blacks crushing. Mm, yeah. And I really haven't noticed that yeah. on, on this one. We didn't notice it a lot in the LG. There was some, but this one is pretty close to my my Sony um, that I have in the in the bedroom. Your TV. Uh, my TV. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the model number of it, but you know it's an it's an LED, <clears throat> so the black levels are are pretty good. I'm I'm getting detail within the blacks, mm -hmm. and that's that was important. Um, so I'm like I said, this is just uh, you know, it's just a good a good you know more than more than it, decent. I'm I I'm definitely I'm definitely definitely happy with with this with this setup. I think that's the interesting thing with this. Like you think of you know. With some of the other projectors that we reviewed, you've got the cost of the projector, which is typically around 2,500 to 3,500 bucks. Some of them were more. I think the LG was $5,000, uh, maybe even 6,000 at the time we reviewed it. And then on top of that, you've got to purchase an actual screen as well. And so I think it's pretty cool that, that Hisense has created a package that to me is very, affordable in that sense. If you're looking at a 100 inch screen or a 120 inch screen, you know, to be able to get the screen and the the projector all in that kind of what some of these other projectors were going for just with the projector alone, I think there's a lot of value there. I do. I really do. I mean, I was looking at some some 85s earlier. Now you can get some, you know, TCL obviously. I mean, it's you want to go with the lower the lower end of that, but TCL is a great TV. I'm not putting that down by any means. Um, they make a great product. <clears throat> I think I saw eighty five for uh, the lowest I could find was about eighteen, but you know, obviously, you know, there's probably sales or whatnot. But you know, it's eighty five. That's this still has, you know, fifteen inches on that. So it's like, what 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 you know, where do where do you want to be? You're still probably gonna have to buy a sound bar with that. You know, yeah, I, I get it. That that's still a cost savings, you know, at that point. But um, I think for someone that's kind of wanting that more movie theater, um, you know, option, this is a great way to go. And like you said, for for a living room, we actually finally got to measure this, <clears throat> so we know exactly the distance now. It's twenty eight inches on either side of that screen now to the edges of the wall. So so now we now we know. Yeah. Um, so no, it's this. This is like this. This is the one, you know, for me. Yeah. For me, um, this this one this one worked uh, the best. Hopefully, our purpose in doing these is to show you the good, the bad, what we like, what we don't like, and we're going to share some more in the rest of this video with you. But just to help you to try to figure out, okay, would this be a good option for you in your setup? So anytime you're buying an ultra short throw projector, you want to go with an ambient light rejection screen, which of course this screen is ambient light rejection. So what does that mean? When you have an ultra short throw projector, the light source is coming from the bottom of the screen, hitting the screen, and then it's going to reflect up. Without an ambient light rejection screen, really that light is going to hit the, the projection screen, and then it's gonna be bouncing most of that light 
up towards your ceiling. So with an ambient light rejection screen, if you look at it from the top, it's going to appear black. And if you look at it from the bottom, it's going to appear gray. And what that basically is doing is any light that is coming in from the top, such as the light fixture here, we've got an open window over here that's bringing light. It basically absorbs that light or rejects that light so that the brightness of the picture quality and from the projector isn't as washed out. Now granted, it does look a whole lot better with the lights turned off, and that's with all of these projectors mm -hmm. that we have, have reviewed, but this has a huge amount of brightness um, for a room that's got a lot of light. We've, like I said, we've got a double window right here. We've got um, overhead lights here. And so let's go ahead and take a look at just some side-by-side -side comparisons with the lights on as well as with the lights off. All right, so now let's talk about kind of some pros and cons of this particular unit. Um, some things that I can think about is I like the fact that it has four HDMI inputs. Again, they're not 120 hertz, but my projector, which is like a $9,000 projector, doesn't even support 120 uh, hertz. Um, but you do have four inputs, which is really nice and convenient, especially if you got multiple gaming systems, maybe a 4K player, um, Apple TV, those types of things. So I think that's great. Um, another thing is the fact that the color, um, being able to have this in a darker finish. I know a lot of you guys, when we reviewed, um, especially the LG, you were like, you know, do they come in black? No, unfortunately they don't. This one has, it's kind of like a two-tone. So there's black on the front. And then as you progress to the back, it's more of a dark gray. But I think it kind of blends in especially if you've got speakers or maybe a media cabinet in front, especially if it's darker and it kind of matches that. Um, I love the fact that, that it has the automatic um, kind of calibration as far as where the image is and how it's keystone. That, it wasn't perfect, 
Mm-hmm. But it got us to a good point to where we could then easily go in there and Which go, okay, do. let me make some small adjustments to maybe the corners or the edges to align that up really, really perfectly. And with the fact that this has got a really narrow kind of bezel um, or bevel, depending on how you want to uh, call that, um, with these types of projectors and especially even with the high sense, um, you're able to really fine tune that to where you can align the image literally exactly around the border of that screen. This one also has four feet that are adjustable too for you know, aligning, which yep. is really nice. Because you know, some of the other ones had At three, three and it yeah. kind of was a little wonky mm-hmm. uh, with that. Um, the fact that it's not just a Wi-Fi capable, it also has wired Ethernet. That's a plus, I, I believe. Um, I would say, um, what else did I like on that? It does have the uh, the auto sensing, like if you get too close mm-hmm. to the light. Uh, so if you have little kids or animals or whatever, you're not going to blind them by getting too close. It'll shut shut it off the screen. Actually, it won't shut it off. It'll, it's like temporary. It'll give you like a five second, hey, we're going to close this off. But it shuts off most of the light and actually projects a number to the right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it does a little countdown. So if it's there for too long, then it'll actually shut the the light source off so you're not going to blind someone. I think that's that's a smart, but also gives the option to turn that off, you know, if you're not uh, going to deal with that. I, I typically turn that off since it's just me um, or, my, you know, my kids are older, so uh, they don't walk in front of it. So um, what else did I like? Uh, like I said, the, the fact that the sound was, was more than decent if you didn't have uh, a stereo system, which I, I do, but I still appreciated the fact that, you know, it, it had decent sound that way. Um, I also, it also has, um, Google and, um, Amazon integration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have routines that when I drive and I'm within a block of my house, um, my receiver, my Xbox and my projector all turn on at the same time. So I'm logged in and ready to go (laughs) as soon as, as soon as I open my door my brother always knows like, Hey, you're, you're on. (laughs) And so that, that makes a brings up a good point. Um, one of the benefits with an ultra short throw projector, because they use a laser uh, image and a light source, you get a lot more hours than you would say as you know uh, as opposed to a regular um, you know uh, LCD projector uh, like what I've got. And so you're going to get like ten thousand hours of life. And like you said, every day this thing comes on. And it stays on most of the day. Um, so you're going to have a lot of life out of that, which I think is definitely another benefit of the ultra short throw projectors. And it even, it even will, it'll, like I just timed out. So right now behind, we had it right. on behind us and it, it'll time out. It'll do um, some screensaver type stuff. And even after a longer time, it'll actually, you know, turn the light source off mm-hmm. just you know, just to keep it, just try to preserve know, that some in case life you left on there, it on. which is which is nice. Now, when we talk about like some maybe some negative items on the high sense, um, really the only thing that I can think of, and we really experienced this with pretty much all of them that we've reviewed, is you are able to hear the fan. Um, so, like right here, I can hear the fan from this distance, but we don't have any sound going. Right. And so, once you turn on, you know, a movie, once you turn on the news, once you turn on a video game. We don't hear the fan at all, but it is something to be aware of that you're going to hear that fan, especially when it initially kicks on. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, you'd really be kind of just nitpicking, like the you know, fit and finish of the box, you know, kind of plasticky type thing. But it's you know, nice looking. It, it's just you know, it's not metal. It's not brushed aluminum. That mm-hmm. type of stuff. So like I said, it's really at that point kind of, kind of nitpicking. But. Uh, as far as form function that type of thing i really don't have you know you know the things that you'd really want that you probably pay more for the 120 hertz uh, uh hdr10 uh that type of stuff you know it does have hdr10 on certain things it just doesn't with my xbox uh, or even a playstation 5 it mm-hmm. won't do hdr10 with gaming um, but i believe it um i have to do some research on it but i haven't had a source that'll do uh, HDR10. But you don't have it like a standard 4K and no, player Dol- No Dolby Vision yeah. that I've seen Yeah, it doesn't either. have Dolby Vision, but typically you don't get that in any projector. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that's really, that's kind of really yeah. it. So. I think the biggest takeaway from this is I'm sitting here looking at uh, the image in the background as we're shooting this video, 
it's just got a beautiful picture. We've got the lights on, the windows open, or the curtains are open. That's still a bright image, man. Colors are still gorgeous. Um, I just think there's a lot of value, especially the way that they've paired this as a TV. It's a kind of a all-in-one kind of package. You've got the screen, you've got the, um, the laser projector. Um, I think it's a pretty sweet package yeah, to, for to, to me. The cost. The, their their smartest selling point was 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 marketing it as a TV. Mm. If you keep looking at it as a TV, I think it's a brilliant brilliant move on their part. Um, well, I think it's why they chose to make the screen the way that they did. Um, they kept it light. Um, they kept the instructions very easy. I just think they did a really good job. This is a Definitely a, a kudos to them. Um, they got a good price range for it right now. Um, I think it just kind of hit a sweet spot yeah. um, where they've got a, a combo is right where most folks are selling just their projector. So definitely a consideration. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it ticks just about all the all the pieces that you'd want. Um, I can play my games just fine, and I can do pretty much anything else. You know. So it, it fits my needs, and if I want to do any of the 120 hertz games, that's what the LCD is for in the bedroom. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll have a link to other Hisense videos right over here, as well as some other ultra short throw projectors that you might be interested. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I produce weekly content that I'm sure you'll enjoy. And as always, you guys be blessed. We'll catch you in the next video.